Coming this summer to a theater near you. Today's topics movie posters. Hey class, Mr. G here, your virtual online art professor. Today, what are we talking about? Movie posters and Photoshop. I uh, wonder, let's go ahead and dive into that. Now for this project, uh, today's task is getting into Photoshop and we're getting, my, my students are doing a three movie poster unit where they're having to create three different movie posters. Now all of these are built around the same kind of experience in Photoshop, but there is slight differences. I am doing a two-parter on this one, so stay tuned for that one. Uh, in the comments below, tell me what kind of movies you would put for any of these topics. Number one, you're picking, you have to do three. I'm giving you four topics. You tell me which ones you're gonna do here. We have comedy, drama, documentary, and horror. My favorite genre, personally. Now, one of the examples I showed to my students was you guys could do a funny movie, your comedy, but base it on a horror genre. So a spoof counts as a comedy. Then you can do a horror film after that. So my example was Jaws is a classic horror film. It's one of the, the most iconic, scary movies in the 1970s. It's a brilliant movie if you haven't seen it. But at the same time, it's kind of a slasher flick where there's a shark in the water, it's killing the people, and that's it's it's that's it in a nutshell. It's big big scary shark in the water. Um, but what if we flip that and did pause, kitty, with a little hand coming up? So many posters already exist of this, and, and using that as a jump off point for my class was really a helpful tip. Uh, but tell me what you guys would do for your three movies that you guys would pick and, and like what genres. You can pick one of each, but only one of each. So for this unit, we are getting into more layer elements in Photoshop. So how do we combine different images? So we're gonna select an image. We're gonna use the magic wand brush, uh, which is gonna isolate the subject of an image. Then you're gonna have to pull in not just um, the subject, but also text. How are we adding text into this design overall? Now, before we get into the build, the one that we, that I'm doing here is um, had some baby chicks uh, recently and took some pictures of them, and I was like, you know, uh, this this would be fun to use for a project. But I had no ideas. The company that uh, that we got the chicks from it was like a it's a hatch company. They give you the eggs and they give you the incubator and you and you hatch the eggs out. So you get these little baby chicks for like a week uh, to just kind of go through the process. I thought that was a lot of fun. The person who who does this uh, this nonprofit, she's like, uh, I got ponied up already for like I got Photoshop skills. Let's do some Photoshop stuff. One of the topics that already got thrown to me was this one chicken. They want them to run for president. I was like, that's cool. Uh, the chicken that that uh, one of the chicks was named Paco. So Paco for president is the is the theme of this one. It is a I, it's a dark comedy, and we'll get into that at the end. Um, going into this, going into the subject, you want to find a lot of pictures up front. That is by far the best thing I can tell you. So if you think that you're going to need like six to 10 images for your overall piece, for your folder of images that you're using, 50, 50 is the minimum, always, always a minimum of 50. Why? Because you need a lot of references where you might need something from this one little thing that you didn't think you need and you want to throw it in. Those are the little things that you need to have across the board. So have that stuff in there, uh, for the design. So let's get into the build and get into some details movie poster time guys now as you guys are getting into that what size should your piece be i'm doing a 16 by uh, sorry a 14 by 18 size piece of poster and i've changed that to the inches on my canvas layout there now for this one i'm doing a comedic poster what i'm doing here is i'm creating different shapes i'm using shapes to isolate and create a character element out of of how i'm doing i'm um, how i'm going to start this layout so my red shape first i'm going to change the color change the circle structure so that i can have a a ring around some text and i want to have that around uh the the character the character that i'm putting in here is gonna be a little baby chicken and I want to have a ring going around its head. So I'm doing the ring first. I'm doing several circle pieces here. Up at the top there, you have whether you can choose to have it a fill section, if you can have it an empty section. What I'm also going to take into account is some of the, the blue that I'm using because I want to have it not filled on the interior, but I want to have the ring itself um, 
a nice thick ring. So looking around at those different options at the top, what sections are the fill sections? What sections are the blank sections? How those sections line up? That comes into play. Then um, putting putting those rings around there, I'm just I'm just really playing around with what color goes where, what illustration, what size do I get for each individual section and and how those pieces work. When you're using the transform tool and you're transforming it out, it should all transform out evenly just the same. But if it doesn't, you can either use shift or control. They do two different things. The shift keeps it to where your your left and right up and down all stays in the same it's all moving at the same time. Whereas control isolates out those individual pieces so you make sure that you're getting the right one. So next, putting in the font. Getting in your text for your design is very important. You do have a font element built into Adobe. So what I've done here is I've gone to Adobe Fonts and once I've logged in with my login code, you can download your fonts. Because I'm using um, the Adobe Suite to, to do the overall image itself. So I've already got tied into that Adobe ecosystem going in there, finding the font that I want to. Now this one, the font that the title of this piece is gonna be Paco for President. Um, I, I think I, I already talked about the backstory on this. So finding the right font to accentuate that storyline is, is imperative. So take a minute, look around the different fonts. You might wanna have two or three. You really don't wanna do more than three and three is really pushing it uh, as far as a different font element to your overall design. Uh, but putting the, the fonts in there, I'm then going to do an arc element and that's gonna change. I wanna have that, that roundness structure to the overall, uh, to the text itself. And I'm gonna be playing around with this a few times. You can see here uh, coming up. At one point I take it 3D and then I decide that's not how to do it and I have to go back and delete it and then delete the layer and redo it from the beginning in just a second. But you'll see what I'm talking about. Play around with how you want the text to be integrated into the overall design. Do you wanna have uh, a pitch, meaning it's, it's angled outwards that you can see it move and shift from the outside of the of the image how are you playing those things together because that does uh, affect what you're doing overall how does it how does it show the um, the style of the structure that you're that you're playing with so all these things really come into play you have to think about how the font is integrated with the image does it accentuate the image does it take away from the image does it add to the storytelling element does it take away from the storytelling element these are all little back and forth that you do have to take into consideration as you're dealing with font just so that you know up front play around with it because it's one of those things that you're going to keep going back and forth on uh, over and over and i know i've already mentioned the thing with pandora and papyrus it's just it was just weak such a weak weak cop out i think that was in the daily notes take a second look up snl skit avatar 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 yeah uh talks about papyrus it's a it's a great skit because it just shows you the the depth of you know some of us we th we think about these things and how far and how much we think about these things now i'm going to isolate in what sections of the overall image do we want to keep do we want to change as i'm looking at the letters themselves i'm going to isolate out the interior section of this piece because i want to have it uh blank so i can poke paco's head through the center ring uh make sure that you choose the right brush when you're setting that portion up because that does take into effect whether the um the piece you can see through the piece or not see the, through, through the piece. Now what I've done here is notice that as I'm, as I did the mask, I can no longer see sections of that text. So what I've done is I've duplicated that layer, hitting control J to duplicate the layer, then going in with my brush and I'm going to change it to white uh, and that, or black, sorry, black to take away white to bring it back. And I'm just going to erase over the red so that I can see um, see the text underneath. One thing I've noticed here as I'm doing this is that the text that I'm putting in here was both uh, red. So I had to change one to white, one to red. Uh, make sure that you also are clear on which ones you put in. So uh, I was working on Paco first when I was on the president layer and not the other way around. So, but you can see how I have this two-tone 
text now uh very simply done where all i'm doing is what is being seen one on top one on bottom uh the red paco text is actually on top of the white paco text so it's just knowing how to separate out those layers all right so once you've gotten that done i'm then going ahead and put in my images got my got my little baby chicks here i'm going to put them in and and cut out the section so using the magic wand tool it's going to isolate the subject by clicking the subject on the top bar there then hitting control then hitting alt to erase that gives me the negative erase to pull pieces out i'm going to go in there i'm just going to fine tune the smooth the filt the feather and the um contrast and that's just gonna give me a better look overall again this is something that you play around with you learn through time of seeing well if i slide this ruler here what does it do and figuring out how it affects the overall image now using a mask i'm going to erase sections of the bird from the ring so that i can see it out now uh, make sure that your sections that you're isolating out the things that you're deleting you're you're working on the correct layer uh, I noticed I had to put an extra layer there and it was not working the way that I needed it to work. So I just redid that layer from the top so that I could re-blend in those two pieces. Now, because this is a red ring and it has a hard line, I want to have a hard line brush to erase those sections away from the bird. So as I'm doing, I'm trying to smoothly go in and just erase little bits of the gradient as uh, from the overall image to give me that smooth effect that we're looking for. And then again, remember to use your opacity, your fill section to take in and take out what you want to do. Uh, going to the bottom there, I'm adding a full solid color. That's going to give me a nice fade effect to the bird, uh, sorry, to the backdrop behind it. And I want to go ahead and move some of these pieces around. Make sure that you do all of this stuff before you start taking away your text. Uh, because I had other people watching over my shoulder as I'm working on this. They're like, oh, you should do this. This doesn't look right. This, If they're backseat driver and driving and you're the one in, in control, do keep in mind that you're the one who's got a, who's driving the car. So do the stuff that you would like to see. Um, now, pulling out the color, using the eyedropper tool to color match the backdrop there. I chose a blue that I thought was close to it, uh, but to get that fine tune, use the color match tool uh, from the eyedropper and that's going to finish it off. Then isolating out and subtracting out the bit of the background there so I could have a nice pass through to the overall image. Um, making sure that I'm cl correct clicking on the right layer. This is one thing that I will say just it takes time and you just learn it over over practice is which one which layer you're working on to give you that full full color that you're looking for to be working on the right color layer that you're working for at the time so go in knowing that you are going to make mistakes i make mistakes still and i've done this for a minute and you know i i'm i'm proficient enough to be successful but i'm not a hundred percent not like super awesome at this uh now last thing this i'm going to show you this in the final piece make sure that you add in the font the text going around the overall images i did a I googled a movie movie poster text uh, element and then found the like the rating symbol, the producers, all that kind of stuff, that, that block of text, tossed it down at the bottom so I could easily see, uh, have that on the poster. And what I did, it printed out, it came in black, switched it to inversion so it changes the black into a white on the backdrop and that works out fine. And then don't forget your cast at the top. So for this one, I definitely want Pocket to be voiced by Samuel L. Jackson couple of the barn characters that I've got in there. I've got Selma Hayek, Josh Gad, Emma Thompson. And then who, what, if you're doing a farm movie, who's the best farm animal selection choice that you can make? Flavor Flav. Why? Because it's funny. And I probably misspelled his name. Um, don't come at me in the comments, but you know, I, I'm just, I'm just trying to do this quick. So you guys have some cool assignments.
Awesome guys, I hope you got something excellent out of that project. Now let's get into some of the darker elements of this. So when I started doing this, I'll tell you now that at the end there, a cutoff, this is one thing I didn't put in the video is, I'm just adding font and text at the top and at the bottom. For your design, don't forget the text element. The text element is the title of the movie, but you gotta remember, you have a cast. Who is your who is in your cast? And then also the points at the bottom. So you got a lot of different, um, like who's the director, who's the cinematographer, who's, um, it's the director of photography, the uh, assistants, uh, the marketing campaign, where was it filmed? All these little things are down at that bottom section. And one of those things, when, you, when I typed it in, I put in credits, or credits for poster and PDF, or not, sorry, PDF, PNG, because I want to get that transparent background. Toss those in at the bottom and did divide. So instead of using black, it would use white on the bottom there so I can flip it so I can read it really easily. Notice that it's a rated R film title that I, that I pulled. I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and make the cast accordingly. So what I did is I, at the top there, the cast is the first number one, uh, the headliner on the cast is Samuel L. Jackson will be the voice of Paco. I think that's amazing. Uh, and then another cast of crew, Josh Gad, uh, Emma Thompson, Selma Hayek. So some basic people that you would normally see in an animated movie, something like this. And I think it'd probably be an animated film or CGI film. Uh, and then at the end, just because I wanted to laugh, Flava Flav. That's how I wanted. So I probably butchered the spelling, but overall, that really doesn't matter. What matters is is that Samuel Jackson's on the front end, Flavor Flav's at the at the back end, who's right next to Emma Thompson, who she's did Man Nanny McPhee. I think seeing those two together in a film doesn't matter if it's uh, live action or not. I think would be funny, and I think and I and what's best thing for me at the end of the day, I want to see something funny. Just a uh, some details into what all went on there on the back end. Uh, as always, I hope you guys got something wonderful out of today's class. Don't forget to put down in the comments what were your movie picks. I uh, look forward to reading some of those. Uh, don't, and uh, as always, let's go ahead and take care of our homework as we always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share all the various platforms. Get the message out to as many teachers, friends, students as we possibly can. And if you had a question, comment, or concern during today's class today, raise your hands in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. So until then, later guys.